Hey folks, Jonathan, eight days left in Lemoore, kind of running into a chink in the armor. Um, this is crazy to me, crazy. Um, so, one of the, the things I'm doing today is actually taking down the last bit of the computer lab upstairs. There's about four or five computers. I've consolidated them to one Intel Nook. And I'm going to be breaking that down. And I'm also bringing my gaming machine. I don't plan on using the gaming machine while we're boondocking. But when we're in a campsite and we have full electrical service, yeah, I'd like to, you know, plug in and play video games. Especially um, with, you know, I spent money on that thing and leaving it behind is uh, not, not really part of my plan. You'll notice there's a beeping. This is amazing. So because I've run a computer lab upstairs for so many years in California that has dirty, dirty power and brownouts all the time as well as blackouts, I have bought a 1,000-watt UPS. That being said, I've never had this happen before. So right now, in my RV, which is... It's run. It's got a 30 amp service, but it's not on 30 amps. It's on, I think, 10 amps in the house, right? It's tripping the breaker off inside the RV, and the breaker that this system is on is a 20 amp breaker. Some of you might be going, "Wait, it's tripping the 20 amp breaker in your RV, but not the 10 amp in your house." Yes, sports fans, that's exactly what's happening. So apparently, and, and I'm going to have to look this up because maybe there's something about the way that the triac converter is in line or something, but I'm going to show you right now what we got going on. This is my very, very standard APC 1000 watt UPS. It's been charged. It's upstairs. I actually just took everything offline to bring it down and plug it in. So when I plug it in, I hear a click in the background. Right now it's beeping at me because it's in battery discharge, which the only thing it's running is the laptop battery. And so if that annoying beeping wasn't going off, it could probably run that laptop for, you know, six hours before, you know, you can see there's no load on it whatsoever. Now, let's go back to the breaker panel and investigate what's going on there. So right now, I can tell that this breaker right here, number one and two, the ground fault is tripped. So I'm going to flip it up again one more time. Let's see what happens. I just heard the, U the UPS kick on. So it's going to sit here. Blah, blah, blah. There's nothing else on in here except for maybe, I take that back, there is the LAN in a box that's running, but it's basically powering a Raspberry Pi. So that's two amps at five volts. There's nothing there. The wattage is insignificant. Well, isn't that awesome? It just works. This is like the fourth time I've done this. Um, sometimes these breakers can get worn out and you have to re-replace, but the fact that it's tripping a 20 amp breaker is a little nuts to me. I guess time makes liars of us all. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and I still haven't heard that breaker flip off again. The UPS is working. Maybe they just needed to talk some and get to know each other. I don't. I don't know. Um, I'm going to go upstairs and get the rest of my uh, gaming rig and the 27-inch uh, monitor that's going to be our TV um, slash entertainment center when we're plugged in. And I'm going to set it all up. This is one of those moments where I wish I had like the GoPro and everything charged up, so you could just I could just do a fast-forward little montage of me setting everything up. But um, let's see what happens. This is super, super weird. So I'm putting more and more load on this UPS um, right now, even though it's not registering. And I wonder why it's not registering real well. But um, 
what we see here is we have a thousand watt UPS with um, a surge protector, and we've got the PC in the black in the the black box in the back, and we've got the LAN in the box in the front. So now that that's that's pretty much how it's going to roll down the road. Um, I need to get a D ring and install it right there and strap it over the top. But before I do that, I need to put my ARC server and all of the other computer or, or sorry hard disks that are going to be running for the local LAN inside. I'm going to bring that all down and set that up. And I also need to put my 27 inch monitor right there. It is not going to be plugged into the UPS because it's an energy hog. It's going to be plugged in over there. But again, really, really weird. I've put more load on it. I've started both of these things up and it doesn't kick it off. There's something about the UPS when it's completely un unloaded that just um, causes Armageddon. In fact, I'm going to pull the plug out of the UPS to simulate a power outage, and when I come back down, I'll plug it in to see um, what it does to charge up the UPS. Again, chink in the armor, Ted. Andy is on his way over, so I'm going to have to stop working on this um, because he's going to help me pack out some stuff. But um, right now, I have hooked everything up the way it's going to be. I have a laptop updating to upstairs. Um, the only thing that seems to be wrong in my setup is, I believe this HDMI cable is kaput, but I'm going to take it inside and check it with the Roku, because that's working right now, um, and weirdly, very, very weirdly, the UPS is not pulling down. I have a 500 watt um, power supply and another computer in the land in the box, a Raspberry Pi, a laptop, all of these things running, no problem. There must be something going on with the UPS when it's under no load that it's causing it to trip the breaker. So there'll be some research about that. Maybe that's a breaker I need to replace. I'm not sure, but that is crazy weird. Um, as I said, um, not expected. So here's the follow-up to the um, amazing UPS adventure that I was having yesterday. Um, it's uh, February 13th, Monday morning. I left it on all night. Um, I did some research out here before I went to bed. And what I learned is that these UPS units can interfere with circuits on a GFI. So... Uh, the recommended thing is to replace it with a more the, the breaker with a more modern GFI unit because um, basically this light right here, which I can turn on by by running a little bit more power. Hold on, here we go. There we go. See that orange light that turned on when I turned on the heater. What uh, that is telling you is that it's adjusting the voltage from the wall before it goes to the computers. And we really want that, right? We don't want to burn up any of the computers by giving it too little or too much voltage, depending on um, what it, it, it'll take it down and up. But uh, sometimes when the, the uh, UPS does that, it has what's called current leakage, which doesn't sound like a, a very good thing, and um, it's not normally. But the GFI sensor on the breaker panel back there actually looks for... Uh, current leakage, like a drop in, in um, or a raise in current, and that is what it uses to sense that there's a ground fault, and so it it cuts out. Um, so the two the two devices are actually interfering with one another. Um, it's doing the UPS is doing its job and trying not to. Um, allow the electronics to get hurt. Meanwhile, the GFI is doing its job and thinks that, you know, the UPS protecting the electronics is actually a human being getting electrocuted. So, um, I could remove the GFI breaker and put a straight breaker in there, but the problem with that is this set of plugs that it's connected to also is on the outside. And I really do want to have a GFI on there. So if I do anything, I might replace it with a, um, a newer GFI that's a, a little bit more uh, calibrated for 
modern UPSs. I'm sure that in 1984, when Holiday Rambler built the electrical system for this RV, they weren't counting on somebody moving an entire, you know, computer lab and studio and gaming rig in here. So that's what uh, happened with the UPS. It's it's not magic, but it seemed like it until I did some research. So anyway, we're almost done. Almost out of here.